Hey folks, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to play another classic roguelike today. This is uh, Robert A. Kernicke's classic roguelike Dungeons of Moria. Now, Moria was probably the first game, I think, it was one of the first games that was based on the original Rogue. But this takes that, you know, this was like the one of the first of the classic roguelikes. It's, um, it's, it's different to Rogue. It's more complex. It's got more influence from Dungeons and Dragons, I think. Uh, it's it's notable for spawning a very, very popular, what we call one of the major roguelikes called Angband. And um, yeah, Angband is a fork of Moria, uh, kind of like a development of Moria. It's a little bit more, it's more complex, kind of a bit more unwieldy. It's, it's a bigger game. I think some people still prefer Moria. And the re one of the reasons is why some people like Moria is because it's a little bit more tight. Um, well, it's a little bit more focused in, you know, the quests that you have. Got a very loose Tolkien theme. It's set in the dungeons of Moria. So basically it's got the same names as the, uh, you know, as Moria from the Lord of the Rings. And you have to kill the Balrog. And the Balrog is obviously a Tolkien creation. But that's basically where the similarity with uh, Tolkien ends. It's very, very, very loose. So uh, what is noticeable about the band-like roguelikes, um, you know, and obviously Moria being a predecessor, uh, is that they have a they have like a town level where you can you can you start in and then you kind of buy equipment from shops and then you delve into the dungeons go and do the stuff you need to do kill monsters level up find gold and then you come back out and you uh, you you know you you kind of come it's like spelunking <laughs> you kind of go spelunking down into the depths face horrors collect all the treasure come back up to the uh, the the shops and then you sell your stuff buy new items and kick your characters out it's really, really cool. It's a very, very interesting game. Um, I haven't played Moria much. I've played it a few times. I'm not very good at it. So again, this is more just for people to kind of get a, a taste of what the game is like. These are very old lo roguelikes. Moria is completely ASCII. It's black and white, uh, so it doesn't have any color. So just you'll have to bear with it. We, we don't have any of the mod cons that you're kind of going to be used to if you're coming from modern roguelikes like, you know, Dungeon Crawl, Stone Soup. Which, by the way, I, I neglected to mention in my last video. Very, very good game. Um, Dungeon Course Stone Soup or Caves of Curd or Cogmind or any, you know, Brogue or any of these. Where often they've got really, really nice graphics or graphics tiles. Or even if, you know, they're just done in something like uh, the Dorian Library where they've got really, really nice, uh, you know, flashy animated ASCII stuff. Uh, this is just really, really old school. It's just basically in a terminal window, just like the old the old roguelikes were. <clears throat> uh, this is you, Moria. So I believe that I believe the original developer passed away a few years ago. So he's obviously not working on anything. But I think New Moria was a was a kind of early fork or an early continuation of the original game, and that was around the end of the 80s, I believe, kind of late 80s, 87, 88, when New Moria was started, and it's still being updated today. So you can actually jump onto GitHub and go and check it out and go and it's a uh, it's yeah it's um, a GPL game, uh, so you can basically go and modify it and. Do whatever you want with it. Okay, <clears throat> without much further ado, let's get into a game of Moria. So, let's create a character class. So, this is this is the first roguelike game that I've played in the chronology. You know, kind of. I don't know the exact chronology chronology of like who made which games first, but I think Moria is is likely to be the first. You know, kind of. Uh, you know, the, the games that's still played that was that's available that was that came after Rogue. I think. Um, the, the Lan is also up there too, and the original hack. So, I'm going to choose race. I think we're going to go with an elf. So let's pick an elf character. We'll pick a male. And let's. Get, uh, so this is now you actually get to roll your character. And so this is how it differs from Rogue. This is one of the difference differences from the original Rogue game. By the way, I forgot to mention. Um, I actually this is going to be part of a small, a short series that I'm doing on roguelike games, and. Um, I, some of the games that I'm going to play longer than others. I didn't. I only played one episode of, of Rogue. Because the original game's actually quite. It's quite a good game still, Rogue, but it's difficult and uh, it uh, it's a little bit basic for me. So I thought I'd just do one video on it. I don't know how many videos of Moria I'm going to do, but I think for, for the purposes of the series, I'm probably just going to do one episode of each just to show the games off, um, or just you know as many episodes as are required to kind of show uh, show enough of the game so you get a bit of a taster. Um, again, just uh, as a as a bit of a disclaimer, I'm not particularly good at roguelike games. I just I enjoy them. I've never I've never actually completed one of the major roguelikes. 
Um, I've got quite far into Adom and I've got quite far into Cogmind. Um, but, you know. Anyway, so let's go. So, uh, this character that we've rolled here, I'm going to re roll this one, I think. I'd like to get. Okay, that looks pretty cool. Good dexterity, strength, and intelligence. Now, when you uh, hit escape to accept the characteristics, you then get a chance to pick a class. And I think with an elf, we might go with a ranger. You are the child, only child of a green elf archer. You have light grey eyes, straight black hair, and a fair complexion. Okay. Um. Yeah, let's go with the ranger. Okay, so actually this is interesting because we got 18 strength and then we got a really high intelligence as well. The second number at the end, I think this is a relic from... I'm not sure. Um, I I didn't I didn't read the instructions before I played, I've got to be honest with you. Um, the, many, many of these early roguelike games are kind of similar in the way that they're presented. So the way the, the, the hit to damage, all this kind of stuff works is pretty similar to ADOM, I think. Um, although I think ADOM's actually a hack-like, if I remember right. Well, anyway... Uh, but D&D uh, &D used to have this weird thing with the statistics, and I think it was mostly strength. You didn't go straight up from 18 to 19. You kind of went in these... You had this, like, bunch of increments in between. You rolled a D100, essentially, if you got a strength 18, and then there was another scale in between 18 and 19. Kind of like that, you know, 13th floor, whatever it is, Harry Potter. <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, you get this kind of, like, weird... And these the, uh, like weird extra sort of strength levels, and this they got rid of this in recent, in more recent versions of D and D, I think, because it was just kind of confusing. But uh, it kind of represents superhuman strength, and then once you get to nineteen, you're you're sort of looking at things like giants. But I'm not sure if that's how this is working because it didn't work. It, that was just a strength thing. Uh, but here we've got eighteen stroke twenty. I do think that this might be something taken from the original AD and D rules, as most a lot of these roguelikes were. Okay. Uh, you'll see that our fighting is good. This is our miscellaneous abilities. Bow's throw is excellent. We've got a good saving throw. Stealth is good. Disarming is good. Magic device, we're good at using those. Uh, we've got good protect, very good protection, good searching, and we've got infravision up to 30 feet. I, I, I've never managed to get this working. <laughs> you seem to have to use a torch all the time. Let's call this guy Glofindel, because he was my favourite character, my favourite elven character in the Lord of the Rings. Or one of them. Okay. So uh, you'll see here we are in the town level and there are a bunch of shops. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six shops, which we should check out. Then we've got our little, um, you know, downward arrow, which is the, the stairs. And as always, the at symbol represents our character. Now there are some beggars and ruling idiots, I think, though, uh, that you kind of want to avoid. Okay, so Morglin the Grumpy is a dwarf and he is, this is an armory. And you'll see that we've got a whole bunch of items that we can we can pick from here. Uh, I'm going to actually check what we've got in our inventory. We started with a book of magic spells. That's interesting. I don't think we can cast any of those at the start of the game. Uh, we've got five rations of food, because there is a food clock. Uh, we've got a cloak, we've got a dagger, and we've got five wooden torches. So we've got very, very minimal equipment. Uh, the cloak is going to give us just what, like an, one extra armor class, I think. I think that's what that one means. Um, so we can wield that immediately. So press A to wear or wield. Do the same with the dagger. Uh, but I think since we've got 396 gold... We probably want to get ourselves a weapon. Uh, I would say a bow. We can find... Okay, this is a temple um, run by Gunnar the Human Paladin. Humanoid Paladin. Human Paladin. This is uh, an alchemist, a halfling uh, alchemist, a Wizzle the Chaotic. He's got a whole load of potions. Now... Um, yeah, he's the alchemist. Actually... What's there a... Oh, this is a book of prayers. Yeah. So I, I was looking to see if there was a healing potion, but I didn't see one. Here's the weaponsmith. This is kind of what we want here. Um, there looks like there's a short bow available. But that's it. There's no long bow. Okay, so, but it's a very expensive short bow. Look. Uh, so yeah, this uh, it's actually this has got it's got plus four to hit, plus three to damage. So it's a really good short bow. That would be a nice little goal for us to aim at if we survive long enough. I think for the, the time being, we probably want to go for. We need some. I think we're going to need some armor if we're not going to have a. Not, yeah, we could take a sling, and the sling would be good enough. Ah, again, slings are really, really expensive because it's a magic sling by the looks. Okay, we're not going to be able to get some uh, particularly good equipment here. Let's go for a small sword. I think that's what we can afford. Uh, we, I might be able to haggle him down on the long sword price, possibly. But then we wouldn't be able to get any armor. So I think I'll go for the small sword. So you actually haggle in this game. Hit P for purchase. Then we're going to uh, go for the 
small sword. Now he's asking 119, so let's offer him go for a 50. Uh, a scrap this would bring 50. Try 96. Okay, so let's we'll we'll go up to 65. Are you mad? 65? Are you mad? How about 87 gold pieces? Okay, so it's got some lively dialogue. Uh, okay, we'll do we'll go with 70. Okay. I'm not quite sure how the algorithm works for this, but you just it's just kind of fun to play with. Uh, let's offer him 76. Okay, let's go for 79, because he wants 81. Your mother was a troll, 80 or I'll tell. <laughs> okay, well, fine. So there's this kind of like, you know, bartering game in there as well. Uh, I understand that that came into the game a little bit later, I think. Anyway, now we can wield that weapon. So we've got a small sword, so short sword. And if we just go to our inventory now, or press E for equip weapons. So we're wielding a, short, a small short sword and about our body is a cloak. I think we probably want to get some armor. And I, if I remember right, the... Oh, filthy street urchin begs you for money. The filthy street urchin touches you, your purse feels like you little bugger. <laughs> Stole my money. Okay, so we've got 260 gold remaining. Uh, we probably want... We can get some soft leather armor. 45 that's pretty cheap and then we could get a shield too now there's actually quite a good shield here let's see how much we can get for the armor this is Morglin the grumpy he might not be very up for um for haggling here but we'll try with 20 okay i paid more than 20 for it myself try 37 okay let's go with 30 then may your chickens grow lips i want 34 in gold 33 okay finally i accept and I think, what do we got? 227 left. We'll go with... See what else I've got in here. Oh, he's got some decent gauntlets. Let's go with a the, be, with the best shield we can get, which is the medium leather shield. So purchase G. Go first. Let's ask, offer him 75. Okay, 127. 90. Okay, so we've got a shield, and then we're going to grab a cap, and we're going to get some gauntlets, I think, too. Or, or um, yeah, I forget if the gauntlets make it more difficult for you to fire your bow. I don't think so. Hard leather cap or a metal cap? I'm going to give us three armor class. The metal cap might be a good one. Going to purchase H. Okay, my spouse will skin me, <laughs> but I accept. Okay, let's just see what else we got. And then we've got uh, some leather gloves or a gauntlet. Uh, I don't think we're going to afford the gauntlet, maybe. Let's just go with the leather gloves. So we'll purchase C, and we'll... Okay. All right. So let's just start equipping the stuff that we've got. We're going to equip the soft leather armor. Yep, and then we're going to have the leather shield cap and the left set of leather gloves and that's it okay while i'm playing this i wanted to i i mentioned how oh little bugger yeah there's, there's a there's a little magical urchin that steals money from you um i i mentioned why in some of the comments i think or it might have been during the video that i was recording on rogue that i wasn't the biggest fan of uh of tome now i i think tome's a good game but it feels to me more like a tactics game, and I think part of the reason with that is because everything sort of, there's a lot of automation in it. Now, well, I think automation in these kind of games is a bit of a double-edged sword, and I don't think a lot of developers realise this. Maybe they do. Maybe I'm just being arrogant. But like, I think that oh, we're going to have to wield a torch, by the way, so that we can actually see what we're doing here. So, going to wield a torch. Okay, there we go. I think that when you have a lot of automation and everything's done for you, it really strips out a lot of the game's immersion. And I don't think that's always well understood. So I find Tome, because it's designed for people to play quickly, and that's great if you like the game, right? If you're already invested in the game, it's so good to be able to have automatically picking up items. You know, you have this thing where you, um, uh, it's less about the items as it is about kind of like skills and you've got these cooldown timers. And uh, yeah, there's a, there's a, you're kind of encouraged to use a lot of the automation tools. I re Personally speaking, for me, 
and we got 20 gold pieces worth of copper for me that i find that kind of immersion breaking i really i i like having this whole manual thing with the infantry because i feel like i'm engaging with the game and i've i've been talking about ui stuff for a long long time explominate and on my own channel and just in you know the various communities that i'm a part of and I, I get a lot of comments like, why do you, you know, like, why do you like all these games with really weird old, you know, old user of interface? You know, I, for me, user people say, I'm, I'm talking for other people. They say, oh, for me, user interface is purely just an, an interface for the game. I don't care what it, I don't really care. It's not, it doesn't need to be interesting. Whereas for me, I'm the other way around. Like for me, if I play a game and it's got the same user interface as every other game I've ever played, I just don't want to play it. I've just, I feel like I've played it already. I feel like I've played it a hundred times. Okay, we've got a giant right mouse here. Let's kill that thing. Um, so yeah, so for me, user interface and part of user interface and user experience is the immersion. And we've got a dwarf skeleton on the floor there. Okay, I don't want to pick that up. Let's just drop that. Uh, so let's drop the dwarf skeleton. So I, I, I actually, for me, it's really important to have little mechanics in the game where you kind of... You have to do my stuff manually because it makes me feel like I'm in the game, like I'm immersed in it. And I know I'm probably quite unusual in that respect. We're trying to pick a lock, by the way, and we can't do it. We're not a thief. So we're going to have to smash the door by bashing it. There we go. This game's hard, by the way. It's difficult. I've not got very far in it. I think level three is about as far as I can get. Got a floating eye here. That's pretty scary. I'm going to try and kill it. Yeah, okay, we've slain it. So we want, to, we want to try and get as much experience as we can to level up as quickly as possible. Uh, we just, As you can see, we're just moving around. I like, I, By the way, I quite like the dungeon layouts in Moria. I think it's a lot more interesting than in Rogue. In, in Rogue, it was just square rooms attached to one another by these corridors. Um, Moria, you'll also notice with Moria that the uh, the screen will scroll too, uh, which is something that you didn't get in Rogue. And, you, and I think hack games, like hack, net hack, uh, etc., Hit it, you've slain it. Okay, we killed something that was invisible there. We couldn't see. Uh, so yeah, uh, hack like games don't have scrolling screens, if I remember. I don't know if that's a hard and fast rule. Um, does Adon? I think Adon does have scrolling, actually. What I mean by scrolling screens is, you know, like you'll see as you as you come to uh, the you know the the limit of the monitor screen, it will actually zoom everything out, so you get more space in a dungeon. So actually the dungeon sizes in Mario are pretty damn big. I'm pressing S here to search. You can also hold Control S to search as you move. By the way, I couldn't easily find a manual for this game. Usually the manual is in the you know in the help screen here. But this one doesn't seem to come with one. Uh that's one of the things I like about Adon is that the game manual, even if you're playing the free version, because there's a Steam version with tiles and stuff. But even if you're playing the free version that uh, Thomas Biscuit makes available or download on the internet. Uh, even that comes with the manual just built in. Okay. All right, I don't see anything in there. Let's get back. I'm going to go and try to find the stairs down so we can go down to the next level. Now, ideally what we want, we've got 132 gold now. I would quite like to eventually go back to the town get myself a bow because we're a ranger and we've got one being able to use ranged combat is pretty important okay we're just going to open that door oh. got a door to the south and to the east here let's open them both ah there's the door down there's the stairs down continue exploring you will be confined okay um so far i'm really enjoying this game i think mori is a, it's I like how there's oh, there's another door down. Look, so we've got a multiple pass. Ah, that thing is really, really nasty. We want to kill that quick because it's going to keep spawning more of them. Okay, that's a white worm mass. And if you leave it, it will just keep attacking. It will it'll keep getting bigger and bigger, I think. Uh, let's go and tr get some more of this level explored. We've got to, we can go south down here. We've got another floating eye. I'm going to kill that if I can. Okay, we've slain it. We've got seven experience. As soon as we level up, that's going to be great. Is there any way to get... Now, you are encouraged to try to stay on the levels as long as possible. Um, let's go down a level. Okay, you pass through a one-way door. Okay, we can't get back up that way. Okay, we've got 31 cop uh, piece of copper, or gold... 
31 gold uh, worth of copper. Oh, that one's stuck. Okay. They're quite strong. We should be able to smash. Come on. Now you see uh, on the left, by the way, we've got our statistics. None of that. We've got a level. Then we've got experience. Then we've got mana. They're all fairly self-explanatory. But MHP, which is your maximum hit points. And then you've got your current hit points. Keep smashing this door. Now, you can do this, by the way, multiple times. Okay, there we go. We finally got it. You can actually, you can set the game. Oh, there's nothing behind it. There's a cupboard. Doesn't look like there's anything here either. Okay. Curious. Now, we are in quite a dark area here. Oh, we found some arrows. That's good. Oh, we've got a green centipede. It's crawling on me. Oh, right, we're down to nine hit points. Okay, we we killed the metallic green centipede. 13 experience points. Let's see if we can survive the level two. And my, my highest level that I've got. Oh, there's a green worm mask. Kill this thing fast. It crawls on me. Singing red grass swirls, swirls about your metal cap is damaged. Damn it. So that thing's... Oh, level two. Okay, so that thing actually damaged our equipment. This is, what, this is what is great about roguelikes. Because the graphics are so minimal. Oh, we've got another worm mass to kill this one. There might be lots of these around. So let's try and find them fast. Oh, okay, I think there was just two. We, we managed to jump on that before before it spawned too many... You know, it cloned itself too many times. If you remember the slime in, in the Epic's version of Rogue. Worm mass is kind of like that, I think. Okay, we've got... Um, 20 maximum hit points now, which is pretty good. Okay, there we are. Now, you do want... Uh, there is a food clock. However, you um, you are encouraged... You know, you can buy more food. So you are sort of encouraged to... Uh, if, you're, if you're wounded, to kind of barricade yourself in somewhere and heal. You can close doors, look. And you can open... As well as open them. Okay, I actually managed to pick that up. Kind of cool. Ah, okay. We're, we entered an open, uh, you know, one of these open rooms with that's well lit. Okay. okay we managed to pick the lock there. But we've actually we've got some lock picking abilities too. Look, yeah, disarming is good. What is this? Let's just look at that first. Dagger, Mingosh. All right, that's good. That's actually quite a nice weapon for a dagger. Now, we could throw the stiletto as well if we needed to. Ah, there's another door. There's another um, set of stairs down. I'm a firm believer in roguelikes that if you've got the time and the food clock's not too not too dangerous, uh, you kind of want to be exploring the levels as much as possible if you can. Okay, there we go. Look, we finally found the door there. We knew there was probably going to be one there. What is that thing? Huge brown bat. Okay, you hit the huge brown bat, the huge brown bat bites you. Oof, it attacked me three times that did. Okay, we've slain it. That was pretty dangerous. Some rubble here. I've only got 12 hit points left. I didn't bring a, po a healing potion with me, so... Now, I don't know how easy it is to get back up to the top. I would imagine that there's a floor... There should be... A oh, what do we got here? Oh, you're on an open door. Sorry. Scroll. Okay. So this question marks are the scrolls. Got to be very, very careful of traps. Um, what I was asking, what I was saying is, I wonder if there is. Oh, there's a shriek of mushroom packs. Kill that thing. Wailing. Oh, can we manage to slay it? Uh, yeah, I wonder if there's a, a, a set of stairs that go back up, like there are in NetHack. The hack-like games. Now, these don't have any much resemblance to hack, because they were developed independently. I actually really like NetHack. I think NetHack's a really, really good game. The only thing about NetHack, I'd say, is that you kind of need to... You need a wiki to play it. Because there's so many interactions with so many things. That it, I mean, you don't need to, but it'll be one of those games where if you don't, you're probably going to be playing it for a very, very long time learning it. 
That's one of the attractive things I'd say. Oh, we got a. Is that a white worm mask again? Oh, it's a green one. Try and kill that quick. I spawned. Spawned another one. Okay, well, it's killed one. Fortunately, they're not that strong. Um, but they'll, they'll kill. You know, if you're a mage or something, or a rogue, and you're not very uh, well defended, they can kill you quite easily. Okay, I'm going to keep exploring. See how big the levels are in this game. Now this is kind of what Angban's like, except Angban's got so many levels. <laughs> what have we got there? Is that a kobold? Okay, we've got a kobold there. He hit me and we... Oh, it did six damage. One damage. Okay, welcome to level three. You can learn some spells now. All right, if you hold shift G, we can learn spells. So we've got magic missile, tech monsters or phase door. I'm not sure what phase door does. Magic missile is going to be useful though. So I'm going to grab magic missile. Uh, to cast it, you press M. You have to cast it from the spell book. 33 pieces, uh, gold pieces worth of copper. Oh yeah, a large room with a, what looks like a potion. Ah, oh, there's a shrieker mushroom there. There is sudden stirring in the distance. Ah, what's this? Giant black ant. Okay. You hit the giant black ant, you've slain it. Okay, we've got more creatures. Giant green frog. Let's use the magic missile. Oh, that's our map. Okay. The mag magic missile strikes the giant green frog. Giant green frog screams in agony. <laughs> I kind of feel bad for the thing. Excellent hit, three times damage. Okay, we got a critical hit on him. And now that Shrieker thing is brought all the creatures in the dungeon, look. So there's a harpy there. Let's try and get away from it. Okay, we're at a diagonal, believe it or not, from that. So let's cast a magic missile. Now we only got one mana. Okay, uh, the white harpy dies in a fit of agony. Okay. Doing well. Here on level three. Now, I've said I was saying I think when I was playing Rogue, one of my weak points with roguelikes is not taking my time, and I think you've got to be yeah you oh we've got what are they? We've got worm masses. Put these things down fast. Uh oh, we got a lot of them. Okay, cloaks damaged. Oh, yeah, they're taking a lot of damage off me now, these things. Okay. We want to fight them in the corridor, really. Getting quite a lot of experience for them. Well, not a lot of experience, but we are getting some experience. Okay. 65. 57. See how many there are? Look, they're just all multiplying. Probably want to run away here. Close the door. Okay. You can learn some new spells. That's good. Okay, let's get out of here. I think there's too many of these now. Yeah, they're starting to damage all my equipment. Uh-oh. Door's broken. Get the hell out of here. And hope that this is not a dead end. Otherwise, we got a lot of worm masses to fight through. Right, let's just see what we've got equipped. Yeah, you'll see that, look, uh, the metal cap, the shield, and the set of leather gloves are all kind of... Uh, and the cloak are all damaged now, so they've... They're, we've not got the best... The, uh, the best statistics. Yeah, our armor class has gone down. Our maximum hit points are 40 now, though. Okay, look, we can actually... Go down a level here. We can also learn a spell. Let's learn a phase door. I'm not sure what that one does. Check it out. I'm tempted to just get off this floor, to be honest, because of those worms. Worm mass. 
But let's see what we've got. Okay, I just pick the lock. Okay, and we pick the lock. Oh, it's a warrior. Okay, we've slain him. And we found a mo molybdenum. Molyb molyb molybdenum. Molybdenum watch. I can't even say that. Oh, it's a priest. Crap. Okay, I managed to kill him. Kind of wounded. What have we got here? We've got uh, a white, giant white mouse and a giant frog. Let's kind of keep moving forwards. I might just rest... little while but you can hit the uh, the number key then you can repeat wait uh, there is actually a key to do that where are we up, up. Anything with an at symbol, any of these commands with an app symbol. Yeah, okay, so it's R for rest. Shift R. You can say rest. I want to rest for 100. There we go. I'm going to get our hit points back. Now, just bear in mind that you are using your food then. And we, did, we didn't actually buy any more food when we came into this. Pretty wide corridor here, look. Okay. Giant white mice. And we've got a frog and mice. Kill all these little animals. There's another shrieker mushroom. Okay. What's this? A blue yeek. He's a magic missile. Okay, I killed it. And we've got two chartreuse potion. Let's try quaffing one of these. You feel better. Okay, that was a healing potion. Another novice warrior here. Let's cast a magic missile at him. Okay, I don't think that worked. Okay, we slain him. Yeah, we're a little bit low on health. Need to recover 10 health. Oh, blubbering icky thing. Okay, we've slain it. And we've got a light brown potion out of it. Large black snake. Okay. Those things can poison you. Remember, right? Okay. Killed the snake. Or, uh, we've got 100 experience points. Ah, oh, there's, there's another uh, level down. Kind of want to go back up and replace some of this damaged equipment, if we can. I don't know if there is going to be a stair up, though. I don't think I've seen one yet in Moria. It might... Oh, got a Nicky thing. Thick. Got your rations. Oh, no. Uh oh, I'm cu I'm cornered. Crap. Let's use a magic missile. Okay. So we killed that thing. Okay, these things are crawling on me. Ah, okay. I was killed. They they managed to poison me. Oh, there we go. So we only got as far as level two. <laughs> but I think that's going to be it for uh, Moria. Um, so this is, yeah, I was Glorfindor the Strider, uh, the level four ranger. We got 104 experience points. Uh, we got 245 gold. And we died on level two, killed by poison. So there we go. Uh, here's our tomb, tomb file. This is another, right. So here's, a, here's an interesting thing uh, that you might not be aware of if you're not kind of a bit of a roguelike. This whole idea of the tombstone file it's pretty revolutionary at the time because it, there weren't really any other games that kind of saved your progress or you know gave you a sort of score to create a high score table i mean you did have that in 
arcade games, but not really so much on home computer games. And I mean, obviously, these were some of the earliest video games anyway. But the Tombstone file um, kind of evolves in various ways. The uh, You can see a direct lineage between the idea of the game kind of saving your progress you know as as kind of as far as you went in as, as far as you got into the game like dwarf fortress took that to the next level really because and it, this tarn adams will talk about this um but dwarf fortress was the idea of the original idea was you created you had this like kind of uh like you create this fortress you know with all these dwarves and then in inevitably it would be destroyed because the game's really hard and then the idea was you then played ro a roguelike go into your old fortress and explore and find all the treasure so that was that kind of idea where the tombstone file just kind of got bigger and bigger where it, rather than just saving your game you know or saving your you know the list of you know the, the details of your character and how far you've got it actually saved the whole dungeon itself so that you could then go in and explore it and this has been used in many many different ways in different roguelike games so there's a popular, you know, what you might call a rogue light game, like someone like me might call a rogue light game. So a game like Spelunky or uh, FTL, the Tombstone thing, you, you know, what we, you know, the Tombstone file, that is what saves your overall progress throughout the game in between runs. Okay, now classic rogue like games don't really do that. All they have is the Tombstone file, this file that tells you, you know, like how far you got. But something like Spelunky you will be able to unlock further like later levels in the game or FTL you'd unlock new ships you know or binding of Isaac or something where you get like new new kind of like powers and abilities that you you know that you can use in your shoot 'em up game so and like one of the most wild and, and again this it, it is directly from the tombstone file idea and i think again the game's developers kind of admitted this is uh, i don't know if you're aware of the lord of the rings battle is it shadows of mordor Shadows of Mordor and the and the sequel, so it's where you're playing some ranger. It's kind of a bit of a you know goofy Warner Brothers sort of game. It's actually quite good fun for a bit, but anyway, in that game you have this this system where the, you're fighting against these orcs and they're they're like there's leaders. The orcs have got leaders, and when you when you have missions to kill the orc leaders, right? And when you kill one, quite often one of their like subordinate subordinates will take their place. And again, that was directly from this idea where the game remembers what you've done in the game and then changes gameplay in order to kind of make a more interesting experience. I think it's called the Nemesis system in Shadow of, Shadows of, um, Shadow of Mordor and Shadows of War. You know, and it's a really, really cool system because it gives you this dynamic gameplay where you're at your you know, there are consequences to your actions and you can kind of, oh no, you know, this, this orc will appear and he'll jump out, come out of nowhere and you'll kill him and then he'll be taken over by, you know, or he'll take the position of one of his uh, support, you know, one of his leaders who you killed and then they'll, you'll, you'll keep coming across them and if they beat you, they'll remember that they've beaten you. So anyway, there's just a little bit of trivia about roguelike games that, you know, you've got this kind of, this, you know, the whole idea of the tombstone file and the, and the game save that stored a little bit of information. Uh, in NetHack, I think, there is a direct gameplay thing that happens where, I think it's NetHack, it might be Adom as well. Yeah, I think it's the hack-like games. But you'll get a ghost, so if you die on a certain level, then you, uh, the next time you go down to that dungeon level, there's a chance that you'll, the ghost of one of your old characters will appear and haunt you. <laughs> anyway, guys, that's more of battle mode playing uh, roguelike games. I'm probably going to take a look at another one next. Um, I don't know which it'll be. I might have a look at LAN, or I think LAN or Hack will probably be the next one to check out. Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to go through and play every roguelike game because there are tens of thousands of them. Because people make like there's a there's about a hundred like there's about fifty or sixty made every year with the seven day roguelike challenge. But um, there were you know there were roguelikes and there were roguelikes. But I'm going to go through the main ones and play the, the main ones. So I'm going to play. I'll I'll play LAN probably. I'll play uh, NetHack. Might look at the original Hack. But I think NetHack's like you know the one to play. I'll play Adom because I really like Adom. I'll play Tome. Home's a really good game. I'll play Dungeon Crawl, a Stone Soup, which is kind of like, you know, the most recent iteration of Crawl. Um, I'll play Case of Curd. We'll, we'll play all of them. We'll play Dwarf Fortress Adventure Mode when that comes out too. Because uh, I think most people prefer the tiles than, the, uh, than the, the ASCII. I'm happy to play ASCII, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think about these videos in the comments. Are you, are you enjoying them? Um, 
I don't know how many people will be interested enough to watch them to kind of to go through a whole series of roguelike games. Um, but I find the development of roguelikes really, really interesting. And kind of, it's, I think roguelikes act almost like a bit of a petri dish for games developers to be able to experiment with new things in an environment that's kind of, you know, roughly the same. In the same way that, you know, fruit flies are used in genetic, by geneticists. Anyway, I'll uh, catch you next time, guys. Take care.